Hello and welcome to Two Girls in a Pod. I'm Sharon. I'm Christy. We are once again super, super excited to have another guest on. Today we have our really, really good friend and we've been friends for ever and a day, I'm telling you, Sandra Gutierrez. And one of the reasons we want to send her on is because we feel there is such value in reading and it's so important. And Sandra, you are an avid reader. That's putting it mildly. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't you say that? I would say so, yes. So let me ask you this. What got you started in reading? I don't know. Reading's just always been an escape from reality. Okay. That makes sense. Well, and, you know, I think... um, So, you know, we talk about escape from reality, and I think that sometimes, you know, reality can, you know, whether you're feeling stressed, it could be stressed about anything. You're right. Picking up a book and reading it kind of can take you anywhere you want to go. Sort of like a vacation for your mind. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) So, but you're the type of reader who, and, you know, because we tease you about this, you don't read one book at a time. (laughs) No, I read books like people watch TV. Most people don't set it on one channel and watch only one program. They surf through all the channels and they watch bits and pieces of movies usually. Oh, my God. So that's how I read. (laughs) That is such a wonderful visual. (laughs) Really. Because, you know, one of the things is, is, you know, we talked about reading the James Patterson book. So that kind of like a little book club thing. And... So she, you started it and you were reading along and then I started and then you found another book. (laughs) Yes, of course. I don't remember which one it was at the moment, but yes. (laughs) Yeah. And so then I think it was like, we're back on track again. Then you found Dolly's book. Uh, Then of course there's free books on Amazon. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Is it kind of like a drug for you? Do we, is there some kind of intervention that needs to take place? (laughs) I don't think so. (laughs) It's a healthy habit, right? (laughs) Yes, a very healthy habit. Well, and you know, we were talking earlier, and one of the things we talked about was the fact that, you know, your nieces, you really want to inspire them and encourage them to read. Talk a little bit about how you do that with them. How I inspire them to read? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I have to think about that one. But my one niece, that's nine, she loves reading. And the way she learned how to read was because she loved playing video games. But nobody would read the the words to her. So that's how she learned. Because she really wanted to play those video games. (laughs) But now she reads books like really fast, actually. And she reads above her grade level, I think it's called. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then there's my other niece that's 11 who totally hated reading and anything to do with school, but I always told her, I don't care if you don't love to read, but you need to learn how to read so you understand things. Mm-hmm. And now, actually, she t- the first place she takes me to is the book aisle in the store. She loves to read now. Oh, that awesome. is so, so maybe it was just a timing thing well and I think it's that persistence too and I think that you know okay. I, I imagine that your nieces know how much you read oh yeah I always have a book I carry a book everywhere mm-hmm. <laughs> well and I think that you know I always tell people that you know as adults we lead by example you know and I think that if you're walking around with a book and they see that then that's kind of an inspiring uh, thing for them it yeah that's very true on. Yeah, you're yeah. making that impression on them. Yeah. yeah. Because even my nephew, like when I would tell my dad about a book, he was all intrigued and he asked me, what movie is that? I said, that's not a movie, that's a book. Oh, wow. And you he... must really do well in description. <laughs> <laughs> so then he got into reading and he likes to read, but he likes Stephen King and stuff like that. Mm. You know, I have to tell you guys a story because, you know, Sandra in our friendship has given me lots of books. She has gifted me lots of books, which I really appreciate. She did gift me one. I want to say it was a Stephen King book. And I've read a lot of Stephen King. I read a lot of Dean Koontz and, 
you know, just a lot of different authors in that genre area. In that book, I could not read. It was funny to me because in my life of reading, I've not really come across a lot of books that I just sit there and say, oh my God, I can't finish this. Yeah, well, there's particular books that you can get into and not get into. Like, for instance, Anne Rice. Some of her books I just can't get into, and there's some I really love. Mm -hmm. She's a really good one to pick because... You're right. There's like you liked uh, Interview with a Vampire. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But then I tried reading Lesta and I didn't I couldn't get into that the same way. It was different. Yeah. So it is kind of true. And even though it might be the same genre, I don't know if it's the characters. I don't know what it is, but it will change that dynamic of the book for me. Mm -hmm. It could be the style of writing, too. Well, that's true. And, you know, we've talked about this. If I read a book and it's not grammatically right or it just doesn't, there's things, it, it drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Punctuation and grammar is a big thing. <laughs> well, do you, it, not only just punctuation and grammar, but that the story has to, f content is important. <laughs> well, sometimes if the grammar is awkward, it's really hard to read a book. Yeah. That's true, too. You know, it's even like character development to me is really important. It's kind of like watching a movie and they don't develop the character. You walk away thinking, well, why was that character even in the movie? Well, I think that you don't make that association with that character. Then you can't, if you don't feel connected to the story in that way, because you don't have a real good grasp of what that character's meaning is to the, the whole thing. I, I think it does impact you. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Did you take a lot of classes in college that revolved around reading? Well, because I have an English degree, yes. <laughs> well, see, that's important to know, people. <laughs> yeah. And also, I took other literature classes that didn't pertain, like cultural ones. And the cultural ones were more diverse, so you read a lot of different types of authors, as opposed to just the set ones in an English course. Yeah, I think everybody in the English courses kind of get the same ones, you know, those classic mm -hmm. ones and things like that. And I'm like you, I took some cultural ones, which I just really, really enjoyed. That's where I read Bless Me Ultima was in one of my classes. I actually read that in one of mine as well. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. Have you read that one? I read it, but I don't remember it so well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. It's one of those things you, you read them a long time ago. And, and we even talked about that, too, that sometimes you read a book and then sometimes when you go back and reread it at a different age. And I think there's some in my lifetime that I would want to do that with. I, I Sharon asked me earlier, is there like certain books that you remember from when you were younger? I know when like middle school age or whatever, I had read one that made a big impression on me and it was just a little fiction book. It was The Ghost Wore Gray. And I loved that book. And I will, you know, I'll still think of it sometimes now. And I mean, you know, there's books like that my mom would read to me as a kid, you know, the Nancy Drew stuff and all of that. But I do wonder, we have one book that was kind of passed through our family. It's called The Shepherd of the Hills. And I really cannot remember too much about what that story is. I know that it has something to do with the Ozarks and that. But I remember I loved it as a kid. And part of it was because my mom read it to me. She read it with voices, you know, like all the different characters and that. So I have good memory of that. But I don't remember really good what the story is about. And I was thinking about that the other day. I might should go back and read that book again because it was, you know, like I said, it's one that's been passed through my family. Do you and have... I bet if you go back and read it, you're going to hear the voices your mom read it to you in. Probably, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. <laughs> because when I read Dolly's book i was like i can so hear her voice oh yeah i isn't, bet isn't that weird i think it's cool it, but... I, it's cool but it's weird it's even kind of like if you watch a movie and then you read the book even if they describe the character different you see the character that they had in the movie yeah sometimes it's it's kind of hard you know what i mean or you sit there right. and say wait a minute this is the character in the movie but it doesn't look like this one in the the book and then you see the one in the book so it, i don't know it's just kind of interesting to me because you read a lot of books that are movies right i do well if i have read the book first i will watch the movie but if the movie comes out first i'm less likely to watch wait how did i say that <laughs> you're less likely to read the book after you've watched the movie 
Yes, yeah. most definitely. Yeah. Could... Because I'm like, what's the point now? Oh. <laughs> and that's just my my preference. And <laughs> I always say I got to get more details, and you know, they can fit way more details in the book. So <laughs> I'm very much that person that will say, but that didn't happen in the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that can I have to be careful of that too, because then I I'm th- they're thinking now I'm just being overcritical. It's a movie. They can't, like Christy said, they can't fit everything into the book. You know what I mean? I mean, it and from the book yeah. to the movie. I but, gotta understand that. But surprisingly, you know, where the crawdad sings, sing. Yes, yeah, uh-huh. is that it? Mm-hmm. Where the crawdad sing. That was an excellent movie mm. because it followed the book very much. Mm. The only thing was the ending was a little bit different, but it had the same concept, so it still made it good if that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah and, and you, you really <clears throat> like that book mm-hmm. that's a wonderful book <laughs> mm-hmm. a lot of people that i've talked to that have read it they're like but nothing happens for a long time and i'm like well i really loved it <laughs> <laughs> i haven't read that one and we we haven't watched the movie either so yeah so it's it's one of those that's on our list i guess do you think we should read the book first or just watch the movie <laughs> I'd be interested to know what you would think about the book. Okay. okay. That's kind of one of the things is, is because often we talk about books because books are kind of a really important thing. And it's like finding that book that just really grabs you, you know, and then it's, or do you find that this is, once again, here's Sandra, she gives me a book and I'm there like, oh, how cool is this? Uh, it's a Laurel K. Hamilton book. And it's about the Fae. So I'm there like, oh, this is cool. So I start reading it. And they're like, oh, this is great. Then I find out it's a series. She does this to me, people. She will give me. <laughs> and then I'm there like, oh, my God, I got to read it. So then I get to the, I'm there like, oh, my God, this is so wonderful. And then Laura K. K. Hamilton came out and said, well, I'm not going to write right any more of those right now. It's a Mary Gentry series because she went back to writing. What's her other series she writes? Anita Blake, The Vampire Hunter. Yes. And there's like 29 or 30 books right now, I think. Yes. If so, I'm not mistaken. Yes. So she paused to do that. And I'm there like, <laughs> why Why did you do this? But I follow her on Facebook and Mary Gentry's talking to her again. So it sounds like she's going to write the final book to this series, which I cannot tell you how happy I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no, because you get you... There's such a buy-in to these characters and things. You know what I mean? And I think when a mm-hmm. story is written really well, you are just so much a part of the story. Mm-hmm. Or that's how it is for me anyway. Well, you know, no, that's true. I think it's very true. Look at all the people that binge watch these series and things like that. But with a book, you can, you know, keep on reading. <laughs> I know. It, so it's just, it's such an amazing thing for us. That's part of, you know, a big part of our friendship has been throughout the years uh, reading Mm -hmm. and we talk about books, Yeah, you know, and we (laughs) share books. So Sandra, how do you usually decide which book you want to read next? I know I go into the bookstore and I'm like, Ooh, this one looks cool. And it's just, you know, never judge a book by its cover. So how do you decide? What is it that you want to read? Well, at this point in my life, I know they say don't judge a book by its cover, but the way I pick a book is I look for my favorite authors. Uh I look at the titles. If it's not one I read, have read, I'll pick it up and read a little bit inside, flip to whatever page inside. And if it grabs me, then I'll just buy it. So when you say. And sometimes I even do that with authors I don't know. And for me, a lot of time when I do that, it's more the writing style. And yes, of course, I read the blurb on the back to see what it's about. Mm -hmm. And that has to catch me, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you say favorite authors, who are some of your favorite authors? Oh, my gosh. There's so many. (laughs) Let me see. It all depends. Like, you want one in each genre? What are you asking for? <laughs> yeah, this is how much of a reader she is. Just throw some names out there, girl. <laughs> you got to break your authors down by genre if you need to. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I can take or, uh, how do you say, 
for Stephen King, it's a yes and a no, depending on what the story is about yeah. and if the writing catches me and the story. Like, he's another one of those, kind of like Anne Rice. I like some of them, but some of them I really can't get into. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Then there's Sarah Morgan. She writes, like, romance, of course. Okay. And then Alyssa Valdez. She writes more, in my opinion, like, cultural, like... She does more of the Latin culture, does she not? Yes, she does. Okay. Uh, the very first book I read about her was uh, actually an advanced reader's copy of Dirty Girls Social Club. And actually, when it came out, I bought it and I reread it, and there wasn't anything different. But sometimes they tell you in advance reader copies that the story can change. There might be grammatical errors, such and such, you know. Mm -hmm. And actually, she's going to have a new series, which comes out in April. It's called the Jody Luna series, and it's about a game warden. Oh. Oh. So she were, I would say... Maybe, yeah, she does write in the Latina culture or Latino culture, but she also, I would call her more like magical realism, kind of. Oh, okay. Because okay. there's another favorite book of her, uh, another book that's my favorite called The Temptation of Demetrio, Demetrio Vigil. Oh, okay. And that book is about... This younger gal who's being watched over by kind of like boy angel. It's I don't know how to describe it exactly, but it's a really, really good book. So mm-hmm. it incorporates a little bit of fantasy kind of into it? Yeah, kind of like Marquez. Have you guys read him? Mm-mm. Hmm. No. Yeah, like, gosh, I'm trying to think what he writes, but I can't think right now. Okay. <laughs> um. well, I was trying to think. It, it was a book that you you liked to the one of the boy in Italy, who goes on to be the opera singer. Oh yeah, that's an Anne Rice book. That one is "Cry to Heaven." Yes. Okay. Which yes, is that really, one. That's a really one good of book. my favorites. It mm-hmm. is a really really good book. Yes, that one's a good book. Mm-hmm. There's so many, I can't think of which ones. <laughs> well, and that's when, you know, that's when you know you're talking to somebody who is truly a lover of reading. It's because it's almost like you ask the question and your brain gets flooded and all you see is a whole bunch of authors' names and not in order. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and <books>. That's true. <laughs> well, and you don't just strictly read fiction or that, right? You read some other no, stuff. Big, yeah, I read nonfiction. A really good one that I really enjoyed was the Danny Trejo book. I can't remember the full title, but basically it's about his life, and it just explains so much about him, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing, because right now, like, towards the end of his book, he's, of course, he talks about how he got into acting and whatnot. In my opinion, it was like pure luck. Mm-hmm. But somebody might have a different perception of that. Yeah. <laughs> and he was in prison, and he just told his story, really. But towards the end, it was like, this is really amazing, because he actually founded some, like, programs for, like, recovery for addicts. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And he also now has taco chain of restaurants and stuff like that cool it's kind of because you also read of course you read dolly you you read elvira uh-huh. I know, those oh yeah that I... sandra peterson yes okay. elvira yes. <laughs> uh because you like autobiographies too because you read jackie chan yes jackie chan's was really good i enjoyed that i one. haven't read that one but that i not i bet that one's good oh yeah I, uh, really interesting background talks about his upbringing i read really ozzy cool. osbourne's was phenomenal too just simply due to the fact that he's so brutally honest he doesn't lie everything he did he just kind of puts out there which was and you know to see where he started in that whole life and then where he ended up and so I think autobiographies oftentimes really do have that ability also to inspire people, you know, like with the book you were talking about, even though he had this adversity of, you know, being in prison and all of those things coming out of it and then giving back to the community right? and all of those things that are, I think are really important. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, it's like, what do we learn? 
from, mm -hmm. you know, right. from those experiences that we have. And then when we can share them, then maybe that inspires somebody else, you know, yeah, to kind of yeah. keep moving forward with it. You know, like these days, I tend to read a lot of like self-help, I guess, inspirational kind of books and that. And I enjoy that the most right now. But I mean, I like reading some nonfiction and that, but I think that the books that I'm reading now, I just feel like that they they have really helped feed my soul in a way, you know. So I just think that valuable uh, reading is so valuable anyway for many, many different reasons. Like you said, sometimes it's about a mental vacation and sometimes it's about getting yourself centered. There's just so many reasons. Well, and I think that's the really cool thing is that there is a book for every occasion. There is a book for every mood. That, you know what I mean? It's kind of like music. To me, it's kind of along those same lines of the, because there's so much that you can get from them. And, you know, I mean, we read a lot of Eckhart Tolle, you know, which, but we've read The Secret. We've all the Rhonda, ba Rhonda Burns, Burns uh, just a whole bunch of different things like that. Joan, oh, however you say her, she's the nun who writes a lot of books. Chittister. Chittister. Mm -hmm. That was a really great read. And she's, that is not a book that I typically would have picked out to begin with. She's a nun. And I picked it out for her because I thought it was time she learned a little Catholicism. No, <laughs> I, I just, it just, oh really, I read the back of it and I thought, this is a book that I think if Christy reads it, it's really going to inspire her. Yeah. And I really feel like it did. Have you read that, Sandra? No, I haven't. It's really good. She's a good author and it was really interesting to hear her perspective. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot of those different things. I'm going to switch gears just a little bit here because everybody out there who listens to our podcast, you will hear us mention Sandra often. Mm -hmm. Part of it is because Sandra is who we vacation with. And Christy and I were talking the other day and we said, you know, Fluffy has Martin, mm -hmm. you know, and we decided, you know, we don't have Martin. We have <laughs> Sandra <laughs> uh, because you've been such an amazing friend to us and stuff like that. And, and we love to travel. Yeah. But Sandra also travels with books. Yeah. And and you didn't mention when we were in Amsterdam, I went in a bookstore and I bought a book. Yes, you yes, did. Yes, you did. She will find uh -huh. a bookstore anywhere and she will buy a book. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's true. Well, yeah, you know, and you expand your mind so much. And even, you know, I think sometimes reading can go hand in hand with travel. Yes, you can do it while you travel. But, you know, uh -huh. it just takes your mind to different places. One of the books that I just recommended to you and I know you read or was reading was Josh Gates' book, Destination yeah. Truth, and yes. how much travel he does in that book. Yeah, it tells me which places I don't want to go to. <laughs> <laughs> that is, if, if you have not read Destination Truth, you have to read it, people. But, of course, then there are places in there. It's like, wow, I need to go there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But he talks about what's really great about his book. And if you haven't read the book, he does the series, too. It's it's You can find it somewhere, I'm sure, Netflix, whatever place they house it now. But it's really cool because... Even in his book, when he writes, he writes about those experiences in a way, I think, that you actually feel like you're right there with him. And he's so passionate about travel. Yes. Uh -huh. And I think when you read a book from an author who you can feel that passion come through, it, does that make sense? Yeah, most definitely, because it shows in their writing. It shows how they analogize, like compare things, and they're like, it's like this kind of, I don't know how to, <laughs> how to explain that. Um, it's more like a feel that you get. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's true when, like I said, whenever we vacation with Sandra, we know her suitcase probably has half books for all we know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I don't carry, if I don't carry at least, I try to carry at least one paperback that's not too big and my Kindle. Yeah. Because we'll be out in the pool and you'll turn around and look and Sandra's reading. <laughs> reading by the pool. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Which, you know what? We're good with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I say? It's vacation. You do it ever reset you on your vacation and for some well, i don't want to read the book in the pool because i'm afraid i'll drop it in the water <laughs> and that's a no for me <laughs> no because you're kind of not interesting but you have a thing about books you're very particular about them right 
Yes, I am, because day before yesterday, I bought a book. I can't tell you the title right now, because it's a new one I just discovered. I haven't read it yet, because I'm currently reading something else. But that won't keep me from reading it, because I might start it in a while. (laughs) Anyhow, I had bought it during my lunch hour at work. I came back, and one of my coworkers saw I had bought a book, and she's very much a reader as well. And she's always giving me book recommendations and whatnot. And she's like, book, book. I'm like, just look at her like, don't touch my book. (laughs) And then she's like, let me see it. And I know I probably offended her, but they had just eaten lunch. So I don't know what she has on her hands. (laughs) So I said, are your hands clean? (laughs) And I know she got kind of sad about it. She looked at her hands and she's like, yeah, they're clean. I said, okay, here you go. And I said, and don't break the binding because people just open those books and right away I can see that binding breaking and you know what if it's your book great but if it's mine do not break that binding (laughs) and so she took the book and she was very gentle with it but then I felt kind of bad afterwards but not too bad because it is my book (laughs) (laughs) you have your priorities because you also most definitely (laughs) you also even with your books you don't bend the pages you don't no, you always use a bookmark, even if it's a receipt or a paper bookmark. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, yeah. you even say you were a little disappointed because you had ordered a book from Amazon, and when it came, it was not exactly pristine. Well, you know, I ordered that Run, Rose, Run, Dolly Parton, James Patterson book, mm-hmm. and... Everything looked brand new, except for once I opened the cover, you could tell whoever handled the book had grease on their hand. And I'm not talking like food grease. I'm talking like grease from a vehicle. And I'm like, I can maybe just try to read this. I tried to read it, but there was no way. I had to get an exchange. (laughs) (laughs) You know, once again, that really does show your love of books. Yeah. You know, because when we love something, we take care of it. Yeah. Yeah, true. I mean, when I read for the Crawdads thing, I bought the size that's not a trade paper size or mass market. It was like the in-between, the big, like, long ones. I don't know if you guys have seen those. Mm-hmm. They're kind of tallish, and they look like mass market, but the difference is they're tallish. Okay. And they're smaller like that. But when I read it, I was really disappointed because, yes, I did kind of break the binding on it because that's the only way I could read it but I didn't like break it right away on purpose it was just as I read it oh yeah okay and I'm like oh my god this is why I don't buy this particular size of book (laughs) (laughs) yes that is very particular on that I know that like if you have a certain series or whatever that you want to get I know sometimes you look for because sometimes they're released with different covers and those kinds of Mm -hmm. things cover art yeah Mm mm-hmm Yep. Yeah, you pay attention to all that. <laughs> yeah, well, for instance, the Anne Rice trilogy, Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, my favorite. Uh, it has a particular, my box, it has a particular cover art on it. Uh-huh. And actually, it's more, for lack of words, like erotic kind of art. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Or, or maybe risque. I don't know which word to erotic. use, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that was my cover art on my box set. And, you know, you see them like at Walmart or whatever now, and they just have words. They don't have, like, pictures. Right. Mm -hmm. Like actual cover art. So I had lent the second one to a former coworker. And when I asked for it back, she never told me right away. I don't know if it's the truth or not, but whatever. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'll get it back to you because I was going to start another job, a new job. And I waited and waited. And she told me all these things like, oh, I'll leave it at my husband's grandma's house. So I went to go collect it. The grandma's like, I don't have anything. So I sent her a message. Where's my book? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> Not exactly like that, and I wasn't mean, actually, because I really like this gal. (laughs) And uh, she's like, well, I had to order you a new one. It should get there. Well, of course, it never got there because I don't think she ever ordered it. (laughs) But then she says in the end, the dog ate it. And I'm like, okay. Why didn't you tell me that in the first place? (laughs) Really? 
Yeah, I mean, she knows it, how you love books. I know, right? So then I actually just posted a thing, a picture, I think, of the cover art, like on social media. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, does anybody know where I can get this? And I was very surprised and very grateful. My cousin found it on eBay and she bought it for me and it's in the condition I had it. So I'm so grateful. Now I have a complete box set again with the same cover art. Oh, how cool. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. But, you know, I get it. There, I uh, collect Patricia Cornwell and I have all of hers in uh, hardback. Mm-hmm. I like that series that way. Now, I have Dean Koontz, and his is um, kind of a montage of... Different formats. Yes. and But Patricia Cornwell, I like hers in hardback. And I, even if I read them, you know, and we'll go through and we'll say, oh, we, we got to kind of downsize a little bit. And I can recycle. I can do that with some books, but not hers. There are certain authors. Laurel K. Hamilton, I have her series. I just really like it. I like the style of writing or whatever it is. And sometimes it's the art on the, like you say, the cover art. I just really like uh-huh. it. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think I prefer the paperback the best, but. But that's because you read while you're on the bike. And I think that's part of it. Yeah. A lot of times I read when I'm on the spin bike. So, yeah, it's just. Easy. I've always tried to read a book while I'm on the the stationary bike. Mm-hmm. I just can't seem to manage it. <laughs> oh, I love it because it takes my mind off what I'm doing. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, my mind works differently then because I can't seem to manage it and I will keep stop pedaling and read. <laughs> yeah, that's counterproductive. <laughs> right. <laughs> As opposed to if I'm on a treadmill, that's kind of different. I can actually. I don't know. For some reason, I think maybe I'm afraid to fall. <laughs> oh, well. oh, hey, that might be it. <laughs> maybe you get dizzy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, you know, I guess reading whenever you can, you know, I think is really the key thing. And, you know, I often talk about this, you know, I just, I feel like, like I've been a therapist for 20 plus years. And when I talk with some of the kids, how many of them don't like to read? And it just blows my mind. That's one of the things, like, even with our godchildren are two girls we always try to get them books you know uh, and, and because we want them to like books and and be inspired to read i think we if you don't start with them young then you know it doesn't i don't know if it if it catches on with them yeah i don't think it solidifies quite the same way but i also think once again it's what we role model mm-hmm. and i was i was telling christy it was really cool because i was talking to one of my I don't see kids, but I have some teens that I'm finishing up with. I'll finish them into adulthood. I don't know. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll just know when it, it ends. But we were talking and she was telling me this week, she goes, yeah, she goes, I have to read a book. And I said, well, what are you reading, hon? And she goes, To Kill a Mockingbird. I said, oh, my goodness. I love that book. And she says, well, I didn't think I was going to. She says, but, you know, it's actually an all right book. <laughs> and I know uh, it did. It just made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because sometimes you're forced to read those books that you don't realize you're going to like, you know, and it kind of opens your eyes up to, I remember when I read To Kill a Mockingbird, I had never read a book where they talked in the dialect Uh, of the place that it was written, you know, where they grew up, you know, in the South, it was written in that Southern dialect and stuff. And I thought that was so cool, Mm -hmm. you know, that's how Shepherd of the Hills is. Mm. Yeah. It's written in that dialect. So, you know, I think that there's so many things that can help inspire people to read. But it starts, I think, when we really instill that in kids and help them to understand the value of it. I mean, I think that's Mm kind of cool how you said that about your niece. She wanted so bad to know what the video games were saying. Well, I'll show you. I'll (laughs) learn to read on my own. (laughs) Yep. I think some people may not enjoy reading or want to read because they haven't found the book that is for them yet. This is very true. You really have to kind of... I just say that because, like, I was never a sci-fi fantasy person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, my supervisor, because I worked at a bookstore, actually gave me a book called The Bone Doll Twin. Mm -hmm. And... I was like, 
I can't get into this. I try to give it back to her. It's like, no, no, try again. Try again. 30 pages. Give it back to her. I just can't get into this. <laughs> so then she gives it back. She's like, read at least 100, 150 pages. And oh, my God. By then, I'm like, I love this. Why have I never read sci-fi fantasy? <laughs> oh, <funny. laughs> Sometimes somebody just has to point the way. <laughs> well, it, well, that or you have to find the book that's for you, you know? Yes. And sometimes it's what you're in the mood for or whatever, too. And I, you've gifted me a lot of books. You know that I like, <laughs> like supernatural and ghost story kind of books, especially if they're based on the state where we live. I like the ones about Colorado, uh-huh. especially. But we have found some really cool ones. You know, when I think about role modeling, you know, my mom was an avid reader. Oh, my goodness. She loved Louis L'Amour. She read romance. My dad, not so much. He loved comics. He grew up with comics and stuff. And I remember one day I went to visit and um, he's sitting there and he goes, hey, that's a pretty good book. And I said, what book? And it was The Body Farm by Patricia Cornwell. I had actually left my book there. Oh, he read it. I looked and I go, Dad, you did not read that book. He goes, oh, yes, I did. I said, Dad, we're going to have, okay, tell me about the book. And he does. I said, you actually read this book? <laughs> he goes, yeah, I did. But, but you know, it was such, it was so cool for me to be able to talk with him about a book. Because he was not, he didn't read book. It, it just was not his things. He would read magazines and things like that, but not books. But I have another funny story about my dad. My dad, my parents come to visit me and I was reading a a book. It happened to be a lesbian book. (laughs) Well, I left it on my count on my coffee table and I went in, I'm doing stuff. And uh, when I come back out, he's holding the book, reading it. He just opened it (laughs) and he puts the book down and he looks at my mom and I walk out and he goes to my mom, honey, you wouldn't believe the book she reads. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he opened it he opened it to just the right spot <laughs> oh my god i said dad give me that book <laughs> so yeah but i think that it's there's just so much fun to to be had with them and i think that your passion for reading i do not think i have met anybody in my life who loves to read as much as you and who has this relationship with books because of what a book provides for you. Yeah. It's such an amazing thing. And like I said, people, I say, Hey, Sandra, can we do a book club? And the answer, yes, we can. But you know, it never happens because Sandra reads three books at one time. (laughs) And I have to say, she's kind of been a bad influence on me because now I'm reading a new earth. I'm reading the Dolly book and Patterson's book all at the same time now. <laughs> and, but do you ever find like when you read three or four books at a time, it's like, okay, wait a minute. I really want to read this one because, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, so Anne Bishop, there's a series, The Other World, I think it's called. And I've been reading the third book in the series for a long time now because I just don't want it to end, even though there's like five or six books. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just, you know, you you gave me, when we were dragons, I think it is, um, they're like, it turned out to be a really, really good book and just amazing. And I always appreciate that because every once in a while she'll say, have you read this book? Do you like it? And I'll say, well, I don't know. And then I might go read it. I'll say, yeah, that does actually sound pretty good. And then, you know, here comes the book. <laughs> you know? One of the things I think is kind of funny is when I did give you that book, you assumed I had read it, but I haven't read it. And you told me it was good. So I put on my to be read list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's called When Women Were Dragons. And uh, you, uh-huh. you really should. It's actually a really good book. Yeah. Don't worry. It's on my list. <laughs> but understand, people, I also know that this might mean that Sandra and I will be talking about this book in about six or eight months. <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> because I can't even get her to finish the James Patterson book so we can talk about it. But no, I already finished it. You're the one who's still reading it. Oh, you did finish it? Yeah. I just need to reread it when you finish your book. That way I can know what the heck we're talking about. Although I already know what we're talking about. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I'm about, 
Okay, see, I, it's a good thing you didn't. Yeah, I finished so I it. I finished out. it before you started it, I think. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So now you're the one that needs to. Catch okay, up. it's a good thing we had this podcast, people, so I could find out what I need to do. <laughs> so I will be I will be finishing the James Patterson book before I finish A New Earth. And uh, I got to read A New Earth again so that Christy and I can talk about it. And Kathy G, we're going to we had an extra book, so we're going to give it to her so we can kind of have a little book club and talk about it. And I think that's what's really cool is when you can read those books and you can exchange that information with somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So people yeah. do that with movies. That's one of the things that we love about reading is we we like to talk about them and, you know, share our thoughts on them. And we've talked about in the past on podcasts that Sharon and I sometimes will pick a book and read it together, read it to each other. We take turns and we pause a lot of times and, you know, talk about some of the ideas in it. So. Yeah, I I think everybody should. <laughs> well, I do try to read it to the dog Daisy, but she doesn't respond when I ask questions, so <laughs> she just agrees, kind of, you know. <laughs> but does she at least listen? Oh yeah, most definitely. She's very intently listening, actually. <laughs> oh, wow, that's kind of cool. So, see, you do have a reading buddy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you know, and, and like I said, you know, we, we share the passion of reading and uh, shift a little bit. We also share a passion of travel. You love to travel. You know, one of the things I thought was really cool is that when you went to Morocco, uh-huh. it was such a fast trip. <laughs> yeah, it was about a week. It was during the Christmas season in what, 2016, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, what's really cool about, so... I guess I'm going to backtrack a little bit, but books are kind of like movies. And if you travel, even if a book is fiction, a lot of these authors still research stuff. Mm -hmm. And like when I'm reading a book, like for instance, Sarah Morgan, she writes about romance in New York and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to write this down. Then I'm going to look it up. If it's a real place, I'd like to go there someday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, too, movies are kind of like books in the sense that if you travel, if you watch a movie, you're like, oh, wow, I've been there. Yeah. And you can say the same thing about books. And you can even say that if you haven't been there because technically you've been there in your mind by reading that book. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's, we do that, you know, because we went to Europe with you. And so mm-hmm. oftentimes, even if we're watching a movie or someone say, oh, my God, we were there. Yeah. Or, uh-huh. you know, we'll things like that. that. So it's it's really cool. It, it causes it to be more of a relationship in a weird way. Well, yeah, I think there is. it. it books and, and travel really do go kind of hand in hand when you think about uh-huh. it. Like you say, the way you, the way you put that, that's true. And I know that one of the trips that we've talked about taking, we we want to go to New Zealand at some point. We are big fans of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. The Hobbit. Yes. Those are really near and dear to us. So we want to go and, and do the whole Hobbiton tour and all of that. And I think that that would be so cool. I, th- I watched that movie and I just, I think, oh man, to see the Shire, how cool would that be? <laughs> Uh-huh. You know, and you know, the other cool thing about when we travel is, Sandra, you're very easy to travel with. But one of the things we really appreciated was, you know, when we went to Paris, you know, we're talking about this and, you know, Sandra's doing her research because we plan all of our stuff. We don't go through travel agents or anything. And you came back and you said, hey, can we do a food tour? I mean, we had never even thought about it. And then you uh-huh. talked about the evening menu where they're like, nope, we're not going to eat escargot and no <laughs> no but then you suggested the the lunch one it was really really cool i really felt like it was one of the highlights of the trip yeah uh-huh. so i think sometimes you know even in that you know you learn about the cultures and you learn about the different things and and then when you do read those books and they're talking about those cultural components it makes uh-huh. more sense or it reinforces i should say because you've had that experience mm-hmm. true So, you know, I mean, I think those things are so cool. And I think that, you know, when you have a passion like reading and traveling, I mean, and then you like in food, Mm -hmm. because we talk a lot about food, too. Food is important. (laughs) (laughs) Hence why why we've had this friendship for so many years. (laughs) You know, we have a lot in common in that area. But we do, we go, we talk about food, you know, when we're 
you know, when we were in Europe, we talked a lot about the food. We would look at the food. They do it so pretty. Uh huh. Oh, and then passing all the pastry places. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta stop in there. <laughs> and the, and the ice, you you like ice cream, so yeah, that was kind of a cool thing too. When we were in Europe, you would say, "Oh no, let's do this," and we and we were there like, "Okay, we're on vacation, we're going to do this," and so we got all those experiences too. Uh-huh. You know, so I mean, it's just overall, I think that we get it's so cool in our friendship, and we talk about the importance of building relationships and keeping those relationships and finding those commonalities that help to. It reinforced those relationships and build that stronger bond. And I felt like it was great. We got to bond over Nutella ice cream in Amsterdam. That was great. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, I can't share my book with you that I bought from there because it is in Spanish. <laughs> and that's the other thing that's really cool. You you read you're bilingual, so you read in Spanish too. <laughs> it takes me a little while, but I can do it. So you know, hopefully. There's a- Well, as we're getting ready to wrap up, hopefully people understand, you know, one of the reasons that it was fun for us to do this is because we really do want to encourage reading. We want to encourage parents to read to their children and all of those things because it's such an important thing. It takes, like you said, it's an escape, but it takes you into these other worlds and these other places. And Mm -hmm. I think it inspires us sometimes. You can read those books that are about inspiration. You can read those books that are funny. You can read those books that are serious that... It's this wide range. Or that are even about memories. Like you said, it, and then, uh-huh. you know, about he- hearing my mom doing the voices of the book, yep. you know, from when I was younger. There's there's just so many reasons that reading is valuable. Yeah. Well, for instance, where I live, Alamosa, there's much not much diversity. So I have to read to get that. There you go. <laughs> You know, that's such another, that's another thing. It's, it's that diversity, it's learning cultures. There's just so much to it. So hopefully, you know, as you're listening to this podcast today, if, if you are a lover of books, it makes you just love and appreciate them more. If you're kind of riding the fence, it inspires you to pick up a book and to read it and to take a journey, go on this amazing journey and see what you can find and encourage children to read because once again, it can help them if they're having different stuff going on it does become that escape so Sandra we want to thank you so much for uh, joining us and talking about your passion of reading and I think the listeners are going to really hear that passion with you and you know and hopefully it inspires somebody to pick up a book and to read you know yes if anybody want that doesn't like to read and they haven't gone into reading, I will help you become a reader. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I will send you a book. <laughs> there you go. And so, you know. And, and I expect nothing in return. <laughs> oh, awesome. See, that's a true re- lover, a reader. So once again, we want to thank Sandra for being on here. We will be back next week. And Thanks we hope you listening. enjoyed the episode. And be kind and good to each other. And read a book. Bye. Bye.